foods that are processed and very sweet like a frappes we have the cakes we have and, and all the sweet stuff we have these are typically the one which will give us a highest amount of spike and if the spike is very high that it is alarming for the body that something needs to be immediately done about it then it bypasses and puts it into adipose tissue straight and if this pattern keeps going on day in and day out that body uh, stops to respond to insulin that we have and over a period of time we develop something called as insulin resistance so in the second episode of the series carbohydrate metabolism we are going to discuss the complications that may arise from prolonged insulin spikes and for that I think that we first have to understand how carbohydrates are metabolized by the body. Yeah. So, could you please explain? Yeah. So, whenever we ingest carbohydrates and if the blood sugar goes beyond a level of 120, roughly around that that point, insulin gets activated and the role of insulin is to shuttle the excess sugar to different parts. Liver is one uh, piece Liver is of the storage. first. Yeah followed by muscle glycogen. The reserve for glycogen that the liver has is the smallest. Muscle glycogen will have more. The more muscle mass you have, the more muscle glycogen you can store. And last, if these two are full, then adipose tissue, that is the unlimited supply that we Plus, have. We don't want that. Yeah. Okay. And also one very important thing to take note is that even if your liver glycogen reserves are empty, Muscle glycogen reserves are empty, but if the spike is too high, that means if you are shooting way beyond the point, body will bypass those two and take that that extra sugar to adipose straight. 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 It will bypa bypass liver and muscle and go straight to the adipose tissue. So, for example, what kind of foods can do that? Foods that are processed and very sweet, like a frappes we have, the cakes we have, and, and all the sweet stuff we have. These are typically the ones which will give us a highest amount of spike. And if the spike is very high, that it is alarming for the body that something needs to be immediately done about it, then it bypasses and puts it into adipose tissue straight. But tell me, a little bit of it? We like, we, we like a little bit of an indulgence here and there. Yeah. So, what do you think about a cheat here and there um so uh it is impractical to expect people to just abstain yeah uh i've tried that that does not yeah, work i know i can't abstain as well yeah yeah um so even if we uh, have having it we can have it in a way that we just discussed incorporating those techniques let's just say if you're craving to have a, a small portion of sweet, a frappe would oh, be cake. a bit much. <laughs> okay. But let's just say a small portion of cake. cake. Yeah. So we can have our fiber first, we can have our entire meal first. So let's just say if you uh -huh. have a, a chicken salad or if you have a salad which has protein to it and we follow that with a small portion of cake. <laughs> I love how we... you insist that it has to be small. Right. Okay. But um, in the end. Yeah. Or rather match it with the carb that you were going to have in the meal. So let's just say if we're going to have uh, rice, if we were going to have rice, this was going to give us 25 grams of carbs. If you're having an equivalent amount of cake, that will give us equivalent amount of carbs, even though it's not the best of substitute, but in terms of damage control, if you have a fiber, protein and fat first, yeah. follow that with the portion control cake, follow that with a walk, that will be the best. If your digestion allows, Pre that, if you have apple cider vinegar, that will minimize the damage that we are going to have. Okay. And you, like you, you had told me today, and I was kind of quite surprised actually. I wouldn't have expected India to be the leading country in type 2 diabetes. Yeah. Why do you think it, it, it's connected to our diet, of course? So, what are we doing wrong? Um, so, in this case, I can just talk from experience. There might not be a proper hard research on this. But in my experience, the two main causes would be A, the westernization of the diet that we have had in the recent times, the inclusion of fast food, empty cal calorie sugar loaded drinks. Uh, what are empty number. calories? What do you mean empty calories? So empty calories uh, will be something. So there are two types of food. One is energy dense food 
and other is nutrient dense food okay so let's just say if you are having something that is loaded with vitamins and minerals that will be a nutrient dense food so that will be giving us 100 calories per se against that we have an empty calorie food it will be still giving us 100 calories but the nutrition we are getting from that is very less so let's just say breads all the all the cold drinks that we talked talked about all the sugar loaded stuff we talked about it's giving us calories that is energy but the nutrient are absent so that is what a uh, empty calorie would mean also when the spike is such that it is stayed going to adipose tissues it is not only increasing the body fat percentage that we have but it is also depriving us of the energy that we are going to get from the glucose mm. so not only are we gaining fat we also don't at, have energy yeah and at this moment we are just feeling a uh, lack of en- en- energy so spike crash but why do we feel like ha- high and happy when we have cake oh that's a great question that is because we <laughs> eat sweet if you're saying that it has no eat sweet we get a dopamine hit that's dopamine. what makes us feel good okay dopamine dopamine is my favorite topic and i can't wait to get the get to mm. the episode on dopamine so dopamine is for another episode but oh it's it's the dopamine hit that you get yeah. right right yeah, so that <laughs> makes us feel good right so we are craving uh our body wants us to ha- eat something that's going to give us spike a lot something sweet we know it's going to be that our tendency would be to eat something sweet we'll get another spike which is a feel good in itself we are going to get a dopamine hit which is a feel good in itself mm. but unfortunately most of both of us they are short lived yeah they like <laughs> and order to mitigate that uh-huh. another spike right so it just a seesaw from that point point on and every time that seesaw happens excess uh, sugar goes to adipose tissues energy crashes and it the cycle keeps Mood. going on yeah, yeah yeah and that's why if we do it once we would want to do it more number of times right and it keeps going on throughout for days in and day out and what happens if this if, it, if this pattern keeps going on day in and day out that body uh, stops to respond to insulin that that we have so let's just say we eat carbs insulin spike we eat carbs insulin spike it this process keeps going on and over a period of time uh, we develop something called as insulin resistance that means now even though the sugar is going up the insulin is spiking but the body is not responding to insulin the same way that it was responding to it before so that state is called as insulin resistance so i uh, know i'm i'm sorry explain that more clearly so you, you, i have carbs my insulin spikes and you are saying my body does not respond to this insulin spike or how does it not respond to the insulin spike um yeah so i eat carbs the sugar goes up natural response of the body is get to in is to get the insulin up this keeps on happening and there are insulin receptors within our body called as beta cells uh they become resistant to the spike okay so that's why the insulin is going up the insulin receptors have become non responsive for a lack of better term so the job that insulin is supposed to do of shuttling the excess sugar okay. it is not able to do do that oh and if this insulin resistance keeps on happening it leads to a state of pre diabetes if we keep going on from that point on it leads to diabetes or type 2 diabetes so that's why uh, it is very popularly known that type 2 diabetes is a lifestyle disorder yeah so this is what them them they mean because of our uh, dietary habits of eating carbohydrates in such a way that we are getting spikes and that keeps on happening for a prolonged duration of time that lifestyle leads to lead us down to the path of type 2 diabetes and not just type 2 diabetes all the complications that we talked about initially is a manifestation of insulin resistance in some way or the other recent studies have found uh, that and many uh, experts now call alzheimers as type 3 diabetes alzheimers is now type 3 diabetes yeah. how is the brain 
Oh, because yeah, the, yeah. the brain uses the, okay, okay. Yeah, and biologically similar processes happening in the brain that is causing Alzheimer's, that is happening. But Alzheimer's is considered a, an old age disease, right? Um, yeah. uh, but it's connected to your insulin spikes? Yeah, so that's the notion that we had before. Yeah. Similarly, type 2 diabetes was at one point in time also considered to be something related to old age. Old age. That notion was gotten rid of way back. And now we are understanding that Alzheimer's might have to do little with age, but more with a dysregulated insulin, insulin res response. It happens in the old age because as we grow old, the insulin response is not as sharp as we are young. So that's why it is very common to happen in old age. But since... Uh, for the reasons that we talked about, that we do not prioritize protein and we eat more junk food, empty calories and all those things. Even young people, as young as teens, are getting al al Alzheimer's. And since now we are doing research, we know more about it and we biologically understand it in a much better way. Alzheimer's is now referred to as type 3 diabetes and it's a manifestation of insulin resistance that we have. What... What other health complications is connected to insulin resistance? Um, all the things that we talked about initially. PCOD as well? PCOD as well. A lot of my clients uh, have so much relief from PCOD once, they are, once their sugar metabolism is gotten in check. Uh, they feel energetically much better. Their mood is much better. It has, uh, it has a cascading effect yeah. because every cell in the body has an uh, glycogen re receptors and almost entirety of our body use that and once something as basic as that goes off track it has a cascading effect um, there are a lot of other health uh, issues that can occur but it does not occur to everyone it is depend it, it depends on person to person that but these things commonly are a manifestation of insulin resistance that we develop because of the dietary patterns that that we have. So you think just because of our westernized diets, uh, it, could, could that be just the only reason or could there be more reasons for why diabetes is on the rise in India? Um, I think that along with not prioritizing protein in, in, in our diet and also once we resort to eating food that is not cooked at home, that does something. As per my experience, I would not want to point exact reasons because there might be some research left to be done in that space. But uh, as a general rule of thumb, if you are cooking at home or if you are eating home cooked food, you are eating for nutrition, right? not for profit. When the food is made for profit, the quality of ingredients, the methodology of cooking, everything takes a back seat. And the priority at that point in time is just to dish out something that is, that Tasty. requires, palatable. that is highly palatable, addictive, mm -hmm. and requires very less money to make. For example, many a times you will see that packaging, pack, packaged food, which is not sweet, has sugar added to it. That is because even if we can't taste sweet, our digestive system recognizes that <laughs> there is sugar there. And it has a similar response to it as an insulin spike. Higher the insulin spike, the desire to eat is more. But I like to give them a benefit of doubt that it's an honest mistake. <laughs> I'm an optimist that that way. But I also do find Indian uh, diets a bit carb heavy and not protein rich. Yeah. And I think that the right amount of protein is really important for you. Although everywhere I look around, people are like, why are you having so much protein? But I, I do believe in the importance of protein. Yeah. So how important is protein? Let me put it this way, that proteins and fat are conditionally essential for us to survive. We cannot survive without protein and fat. Or if we deprioritize protein and fat, our health will decline. With carbs, that's not the case. Our body has mechanisms where if we do not eat carbs, we can still sustain. 
with without it and that and i believe it's an it's a part of our evolution because there have been times where carbs were not as readily available to us so even if we just eat fat and protein, protein. in the right amount and we fiber. can fiber yeah we can live and also thrive, thrive. but uh, just carbs would not do that because mostly is carb mostly the carbs is uh, is uh, maneuvered around pro giving us energy to do stuff and also our activity levels have gone way down mm. so even if you're having carbs and if you're not doing activity in order to utilize those carbs for a lack of a be- better term then it's going to have uh, the similar if effect that we just talked talked about like we said the amount of carbs that we can handle would depend upon the amount of muscle we have and the amount of activity or the magnitude of activity that we can do mm. so in other words if you want to have more carbs in your diet working out is something that you can consider doing mm. uh in my opinion there are many other reasons to work out rather yeah. than to in- include carbs but just from a perspective of eating carbs doing workout in a way where it is high intensity workout for a shorter duration of time so resistance and strength training mm. would help a great deal mm. in not giving us an insulin spike and mitigating all the uh, health complications that arise from that so along with the two points that we talked about deprioritizing protein and uh, empty calories and rationalization of that i think lack of movement is also something that could be a contributing factor to this and also yeah i i understand that uh, apart from disorders like type 2 diabetes and you know pcod and alzheimers there's also you know this case of rapid aging with insulin spikes isn't there yeah it's also aging us yeah so Quicker. yeah so just just to put in an extremely layman term aging is just we getting cooked from the in in his side <laughs> like it's like a chicken browning in the uh, uh, then that's what aging is the 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 wrinkles that we get mm-hmm. on the skin mm-hmm. and and uh, all the signs of aging are that and if insulin is spiked or if the blood sugar is spiked for prolonged duration of time that process is faster so having a stable sugar supply in the blood would have anti aging e- effects to it now everyone's listening aren't we now everyone's like what <laughs> mm. we want to look younger so yeah are any of these complications reversible like di- type 2 diabetes can it be reversed um in my experience uh i have been more than 10 years into this field and there is no client of mine who has type 2 diabetes induced because of lifestyle and have not got his it is reversed reversed completely yes wow but there is a proper methodology and framework to it which i apply which we will be discussing in detail in the next, next episode, episode that yeah. we have because it is a little more nuanced um because once you are on type 2 diabetic medication uh you have it is a narrow path that you are uh, treading that you know it's very common for us to see a diabetic who is on medication is on the gym is who works out is asked to carry a, a something sweet with them because yeah. it's very easy for them to get hypoglycemic so it's a very narrow path to tread but it's not very difficult to but to answer your question type 2 diabetes which is lifestyle induced can be reversed wow well, that's giving a lot of people hope and uh, we'll get into the actionable steps and frameworks to deal with existing disorders in our next episode